Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I joined the Bundeswehr from 1976 to 2013. And in the year uh, t uh, 2003, I refused to break the law that was ordered to me. Uh, there are, of course, several different perspectives. There is no singular assessment. I'm going to give you some important facts and you have to decide yourself what results from that. But first, I want to explain why I do not follow the view of the German government. The German government says the states doesn't, or, or all states don't make mistakes. And I think it's a big mistake to kill six million Jews or to wage any other war of aggression, even, it's, even if, if it's a state and not a singular person like Al Capone. So the criminal past of the German government and its armed forces must be taken into consideration. Uh, bear in mind what the Bundeswehr did in 1999, Yugoslavia, it has been mentioned already, uh, and 2001, Afghanistan, or 2003, the Iraq war. In 1999, the war against Yugoslavia was a clear uh, violation of international law, as uh, the former German Chancellor Schroeder confessed afterwards. And in 2003, the war against Iraq had four lies and um, the uh, demand for neglecting the law, the uh, order I got, I didn't want to obey. First, I will show you on the map here, on the wall, that was the order in German and um, they wanted me <coughs> not to consider what had been in the past. Vergangenheit means what had uh, been told to me in the past. And uh, they also asked me, do you also refer to the law? And I said, yes, of course, the law um, has uh, to be followed. And then they told me uh, not to follow the law and to break my oath. Otherwise, they said I would be dismissed, at least demoted. Um, they had me admitted to a psychiatric, psychiatric ward, stated the obeying the law was a crime, called for the public prosecutor because of insubordination. But in fact, they did not obey the law because wars of aggression are forbidden and it's not allowed to order that. Then they demoted me from major to captain and they didn't even respect the verdict because the next picture, uh, I succeeded. <coughs> the verdict was against them and uh, they were not allowed to, uh, to order that any longer. And um, the court said that they had to stick to the law, but then they again said, they wrote it down in their password protected area, that they will not follow these verdicts. That's at the bottom, other um, decisions of conscience with political background, they call it with political background, um, should be similar and uh, to be functional. We have to uh, repeat the order and with, uh, with all means necessary um, state that they can do what they want. So um, I think that's the um, clear difference between armed heaps and an army inside a democracy. A normal army would uh, be bound to law and order and to the justice, but the Bundeswehr um, spoke out quite clearly against democracy. And I think they will always do. They did not apologize and they, I, I have never heard anything like we will not do it in the future. <clears throat> so maybe it's still their uh, view that they can do that against the law. 
So I call them criminals and uh, I mean all of them who are in favor of war uh, that is illegal and um, immoral. Not only the Bundeswehr, also the parliament, the officials who uh, decided to support the Iraq war. Second, there is no independent media in Germany. For example, the just mentioned U-turn from armed forces inside a democracy to an armed heap. Turning down democracy was nearly never mentioned in TV, radio or mainstream press. In 1999 and 2003, the lies with which the aggression, aggression uh, was justified, the lies were spread, uh, uh, for example, the um, um, alleged horseshoe plan 1999 or the Holocaust 1999 or in 2003, the nuclear weapons, biologic weapons, chemical weapons, everything was wrong. And then they decided to take the fourth lie and still we hear that today what George Tenet, the former CIA or the, at that time CIA director, denied that it was no war on terror. Saddam Hussein, George Tenet said, had nothing to do with 9-11 and nothing with Al-Qaeda. But on television you could always see with any transmission the bottom line war on terror. Even after George Tenet made clear that that's not true and um, um, yeah, I don't know why, but that was always on television, could always be seen. Now, third to the war in Ukraine. Many facts are not only withhold, but even regularly reversed. For example, in Mariupol, it was stated that the Russians hold civilians as human shields, but the witness told the opposite. Uh, I cut a little bit of the time so we can discuss more. The same was in Butcher. Uh, in Butcher, the television told us the Russians uh, made a massacre, so I will just uh, play that in German. Fassungslosigkeit und Abscheu, das waren die Reaktionen auf die Nachrichten und Bilder aus der ukrainischen Stadt Butscha. Die USA haben angekündigt, Beweise für Kriegsverbrechen und möglicherweise einen Völkermord zu sammeln. Die ersten Bilder aus Butscha wurden vom ukrainischen Verteidigungsministerium zur Verfügung gestellt, aber mittlerweile haben sich unabhängige Journalisten, auch unsere Korrespondentin Katrin Eigendorf, selbst in Butscha umgesehen. Doch ich kann sagen, mein Eindruck dort vor Ort widerspricht ganz deutlich der Behauptung des russischen Außenministers Lavrov, dass es sich hier um eine Inszenierung handeln könnte. Das ist eine schlichtweg Lüge. For those who do not understand German, the television said Lavrov lied, it's uh, just a lie because the massacre is real and was not invented. So in our times with uh, internet you can find proofs. Uh, did the massacre happen or didn't it? And uh, I found uh, who you should believe is the mayor of Butcher. Some days ago he um, presented a video and uh, he was very glad to report that they have um, prevailed, the Russians are no longer there. Now in our times you can uh, see whether that's true and let's take a look, let's have a look at that video. I may I think you, you may all know that the video is not longer available because the YouTube uh, um, control, YouTube account is not longer valid. But I know, or I, I knew before, that also our internet 
is castrated, so I uh, <laughs> recorded the video and I can present you the beginning. That's the mayor of Bucha. And so on, I also cut the video. You see, he's smiling, there is no single victim in the video. And the same is in the next proof. Und da schreibt Hermann Plopper folgendes. I shorten it also. Places of Russian forces. Also, azov bataillone und ukrainische Polizei haben die Stadt Butscha von russenfreundlichen Saboteuren und Komplizen gereinigt. Das klingt sehr, sehr seltsam. Was meinen die mit Reinigung? So, that was only the proof that there was someone who made the victims, the, the bodies. But there is also another proof. Hier starten die Herren eine Drohne und äh, verschaffen sich eine Übersicht von oben. Spätestens da hätte man sehen müssen, dass da irgendwo Leichen rumliegen. Und zwar massiv Leichen rumliegen. Ähm, das wird in diesem Video nicht gezeigt und es wird auch mit keinem Wort erwähnt. Und dann frage ich mich doch, ähm, wie kann das sein? Also wir gucken uns nochmal an, von wann ist denn dieses Video? Dieses Video ist vom 2.4.2022. That was the video of the Ukrainian police. If you are interested, I can give you the whole video. Also in the video of the Ukrainian police, you cannot see a single victim. So it's uh, clear that all the victims uh, were shot after or killed after or from since the 2nd of April. And not before, but the Russians were out at end of March. So it's very clear that the television even lied or was wrong, but they don't correct it. And then I say, if they don't correct it and if, if they had told that it was the Russians, that's done by their own will. That's, that's not an accident. They want to lie at us. And also the statement, st statements of George Friedman. The primordial interest of the United States, over which for a century we have fought wars, the first, second Cold War, has been the relationship between Germany and Russia, because united they are the only force that could threaten us, and to make sure that that doesn't happen. William Burns, Mark Miley, Jens Stoltenberg, nearly nobody in Germany knows the statements <clears throat> because that would make clear why there is war in Ukraine. Nor that there had been a civil war since, 19, uh, since 2014 before Russia escalated, what uh, just Ray McGovern had told, and especially that the war would already be over if Boris Johnson hadn't inter had not intervened That's all not mentioned. General retired Harry Kuert had to go to Switzerland to make that public in the newspaper Zeitgeschehen im Fokus. He wasn't able to make it public in Germany. Uh, politicians and voters in Germany are terribly incited by Rus R Russophobia. I know only one exception, <clears throat> the former mayor of Hamburg, Klaus von Donani, could give the public a piece of his mind in NDR, the Northern Television, but that was quickly drowned by warmongering again. And uh, to end, I give you my opinion. The war in Ukraine is no turning point in history, as Chancellor Olaf Scholz Our TV and press are lying. They know <clears throat> after World War II, it was NATO states who turned the European peace into war. 1974, Turkey attacked Greece. 1999, NATO as a whole destroyed Yugoslavia. In 2001 and 2003, the US and its obedience invaded Afghanistan and Iraq. Then in 2014, the US helped Ukraine
to chase away the elected government and kill their own people for racist and economic reasons. Vladimir Putin does the same as John F. Kennedy did in 1962, like we have just heard only 62 years later and many Western wars later, which, when I am correctly informed also, is not legal, but big countries are known for not always respecting international law, when in their eyes it is crucial for their security. And the war would be over as quickly as Donald Trump asserts, if he were allowed to speak out freely that the key is the Treaty of Astana. here at the wall. But Joe Biden does not know that contract or is not willing to respect it. I will just read it. The security of each participating state is inseparably linked to that of all others. Each participating state has an equal right to security. We reaffirm the inherent right of each and every participating state to be free to choose or change its security arrangement, including treaties of alliance as they evolve. Each state has also the right to neutrality. And there is the cut in German television and German newspaper. You will not read the next sentence. That is, each participating state will respect the rights of all others in these regards. They will not strengthen their security at the expense of the security of other states. That's very clear. Ukraine could have made an alliance with the Philippines or with whomever, but not extend NATO because Russia had made clear that that's against their <coughs> interests, their legal interests, security interests. Our media seem to believe that it is best not to know that Ukraine had obliged in 2010 not to join NATO against the vital interests of Russia. And I fear still today that it's not good for your career to know the truth and speak out plain text. But I prefer to stick to international law and, may, and uh, my um, oath and to my oath, rather than having uh, F point, point, point career. I don't uh, uh, speak the word. So uh, I end with one quote. It's from a US general. Smedley D. Butler, retired United States Marine Corps Major General. He got two times the Medal of Honor. And he said, war is a record. It always has been. It is possible the oldest, easily the most profitable, surely the most vicious. It is the only one international in scope. It is the only one in which the profits are reckoned in dollars and the losses in lives. A record is best described, I believe, as something that is not what it seems to be to the majority of the people. Only a small inside group knows what it's about. It is conducted for the benefit of the very few and the expense of the very many out of war a few people make huge fortunes. So uh, I could uh, extend that because I think uh, it's more interesting that we can uh, discuss. I thank you very much here uh, for your patience and I'm looking forward to many questions, I hope. Thank you very much. So, questions, remarks? Peter. Okay, well, thank you very much. A very, a very explicit uh, expose. Uh, my question is actually indirectly linked to it, and it's linked to Germany. Germany 
still doesn't have a, a peace agreement with the United States, with the with the Allied forces, and therefore I understand uh, this agreement, which is a an armistice <coughs> equivalent to an armistice agreement, has certain conditions, and one of these conditions I understand is that Germany should never do anything that goes against the grains or against the interests of the United States, and therefore. Uh, but this is the explanation why Germany acts like a like a puppet to uh, to the U.S. to the U.S. orders, and since Germany is the leader of the of the European Union, so to speak, at least economically, the whole European Union sort of follows the same um, this, this, the same uh, uh, trend. Now, to how. Uh, how can you comment on that? Uh, I saw this in in Berlin in the, in the war museum. This was very clearly explained. But the consequences is uh, why 60 years after more, 80 years after this war, uh, still no German chancellor or German president has had the guts to say, no, stop. Uh, we are a sovereign country. We go our own way. Uh, why is that? Has that not happened so far? Well, it's true that we have no peace uh, contract, but we have something similar. Uh, it's not called peace contract uh, because <clears throat> you um, would have to pay reparations. Uh, that's written in the Waffenstillstand. Um, um, Ceasefire. Ceasefire. Uh, ceasefire. Thank you. In the ceasefire contract. So they called it two plus four contract. Abschließende Regelung in Bezug auf Deutschland. That means final regulation. So that's exactly uh, the end of war. But not called peace because of monetary uh, reasons. So uh, on, the, on the paper, Germany now is independent. Germany has got sovereignty with the two plus four contract, but uh, you are right, we don't have it in reality. When <clears throat> the Americans want to uh, put their, their, to rise their flag in Rammstein, uh, they can rise just the United States flag and no European, no German, only their flag. They can do what they want. They can uh, compromise the um, um, telephone, of the Chancellor, as they did. They can do what they want. They can uh, blow up our pipeline and uh, the Chancellor has to uh, stand... Chancellor knew about it. Yeah, uh, Scholz, yes. It has to stand there and, and say, uh, yes, 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 you can do it. I, I don't say anything against that. <clears throat> so um, I think the only way out is that the, the normal people will know what's going on, that we are puppets, that they know we are not free in reality and uh, that they know that that's not legal. We, we are sovereign. Germany is sovereign. So we could, as one politician uh, said, uh, have uh, forbidden the United States to use Germany for the Iraq war. But he said it only once. Uh, like Chancellor Schroeder, they, he said uh, such things with uh, such adventures, with uh, force and uh, brutality, uh, you cannot make with us. And then he was invited to the United States and there was an um, um, exchange of um, opinion and with the exchanged opinion he came back uh, unlimited solidarity with the United States. So they have the power. And I the people must that, know. He was threatened, actually, uh, yes. with, with this letter. And, you, and we came back and bent it over. We, we know that uh, it can happen like uh, Haider or Möllemann or Barschel. They are all dead now, yes. and everyone knows it. Yes. Now, uh, if I just may pick on that, because it has all to do with this, with this war. You know, the, the BITS, the, the Bank for International Settlement, was was created in 1932 or 31 or 32 30, actually 1930 mm -hmm. 1930 31 i think so well 30 or 31 
for uh, the uh, for the German debt settlement after the second after the first world war but Germany actually paid all together about 20% of all the debt that they would have had to pay for both wars you know this uh, so this this was already known at that time because Germany was actually acting for the United States to fight as somebody else presented this morning uh, to to fight against the Soviet Union that this this was the purpose all the time of of these of these world wars and the bank was actually set up uh, already in, in in the early 30s to to finance the next German government to fight against Russia again and that's how, that has exactly happened uh, you know the money was transferred the first president of the Federal Reserve of of, uh, of the peace was a uh, 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 deputy chairman of, of the Federal Reserve, I forgot his name, and the money was transferred in suitcases and the, 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 the piece is about less than a kilometer away from the, from the border to Germany. And the money was just transferred across the border to the, to, the, to the Reichsbank to finance Hitler. And so did many other uh, oil companies, for example, financed energy for, uh, for, for Hitler. So. Hitler did the job for the United States again. It was a proxy war against the the the, 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 the Soviet Union at the time, and and therefore, what what has happened in the meantime? This this bank is in the international settlement is a, a privately owned bank by the Rothschild family, and and it is absolutely secret. But we have to know, and I think that's what most people don't know, is that currently they control a, more than 90% of the worldwide monetary flow. So basically all, I think an exception of maybe five or six or seven small central banks are not under the control of the BIS. Everybody else is, even China. Since two or three years, China, China's central bank is also part of the, uh, of the Bank for International Settlement. So basically also controlled by them. In other words, they, as long as we are under this monetary system, which, uh, which is linked to, to BlackRock, they can do whatever they want. And I think China and Russia has realized that and they, there's a big effort going on of de-dollarizing. Because if you look at the, at the monetary flow, I'm sorry if I'm too long, but I think this is something which is very important that most people don't don't know. If you look at the monetary flow, what we used to call convertible currencies, of the converter so-called convertible currencies, uh, the dollar has about sixty percent, is flooding the market with sixty percent. Granted, it's still pro forma the largest economy, but China which is in some ways even larger than the larger economy than, than in PPP terms, it's the larger economy than the United States, the second largest, they only have five, but less than 5% of the monetary flow, the international monetary flow. That tells you how much the, uh, uh, the dollar is backed by nothing, actually. It's less than the lot there. And, uh, and but it's still it's dominating. And with that domination, which came about when the when the when the uh, when the dollar uh, gold parity was resolved, automatically the the dollar became the gold standard. And then that then that that meant because everybody needed reserves, gold reserves, they got dollar reserves. The Federal Reserve was at that time able to print as many dollars as they needed, as the world needed. And the second step came when OPEC was obliged by the United States, I think at that time by Father Bush, who had a very close relationship uh, with, uh, with, with Saudi Arabia. So OPEC had then to conform and uh, trade all the hydrocarbons in, in US dollars, which made, since everybody needed energy, and still today, of all the energy used in the world, about 85% is in hydrocarbons. So everybody needs dollars to pay for these hydrocarbons. This is, this is lessening now, 
But that has allowed the United States to actually flood the, the, the monetary market with 60%. And it's very, very difficult. So we have to get out of that. And all of it is controlled by the Bank for International Settlement. So this, this is one of the big issues which, which has to be made public, I believe, so that people understand that de-dollarization and an independent monetary system is, is, uh, is a necessity. Sorry for talking too long, but I'm... <clears throat> no, it was not too long, it was long, but I think it's necessary, you are right. And I would agree that uh, who controls the money controls the world. Uh, we have had it heard also before here. <clears throat> That's true, but um, it's not only the money. Uh, the dollar, uh, also to, um, co concerning the money, the, the dollar is only living because of China. China has a lot of dollars yes. and they are interested that the dollar doesn't break now. So uh, the United States is in danger to be um, blackmailed by China. And uh, I see not only the the de-dollarization between Saudi Arabia and uh, Russia and China, but also the danger that the dollar could break overnight if the Chinese uh, liked to do that. The Chinese and at least three trillion yes, dollars. Yes, and, and the, next, the next point is uh, that it, the monetary system will collapse. Yes, and the next point is that it's not only the money, uh, but also the um, representation or the the image uh, the public has of the countries. Um, the United States succeeded and also Europe succeeded in, uh, in um, telling the fairy tale we are the good ones, we have rules and the rules are good, but now people um, are recognizing that the main rule is hypocrisy and the other rule is we make the rules whenever we want and, and whatever we want. So when people know that they are bad guys and not the good ones, uh, that could break uh, the, the image. For example, uh, India, you know, the, 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 uh, India was the, the former name of um, the uh, now in the United Nations presented old name Bharat. They call them them themselves Bharat, also in the in the United Nations. And I asked an Indian in Germany, is that uh, only once? Uh, had that been once, or is it for the future? And he said, uh, well, at the moment you can use both. You can use either India or Bharat. So I think that's a sign that the uh, states wake up and say, we are no longer your uh, subordinates. We are no longer uh, your uh, slaves. slaves. Yes, exactly, slaves. And, and uh, I think that is the greater danger for the United States that the people see that the image is wrong and that uh, the rest of the world is against them because the, the good world is only all together with, with Europe, with NATO, uh, the United States have about 15% of the population and 85% uh, are on the other side. And they already know that it's only lies and nothing is true and it's only warmongering. And that is more dangerous than the money, I think. That's probably true. You are very, very right. Now you can see that you, you say people are waking up, countries are waking up. And I think these past elections for the European Parliament oh, it, a huge wake up call. Yes. And it, could, it, it shows that the people are really uh, on the ball and, uh, and the United States know that. So they're, they're trying to pull down into the abyss as many people, as many infrastructures, as many countries that they can before they collapse. Uh, and we have to avoid that. Yes, you're right. 5% increase in AFD and 6% yes. BSV. So that's a clear uh, sign. Clear, clear statement. Clear thank statement. You, thank you very much. You're welcome. Very short, very short. Just one half minute. No. Uh, but first, I will uh, say, uh, say you, thank you. You're handling with a difficult, uh, a really strange story. 
uh, being chair European, you know, uh, we don't have till now no one source where we can see who was killed by name, how big people was killed. We don't know. We, we heard about the numbers of uh, killed people, but we don't know who these people, how. And um, that's um, one, 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 one story. Uh, Irene Kalin, uh, the Green uh, MP of Swiss Parliament, she was last year, or the, yeah, last year she was a president of National a big chamber of Swiss Parliament. She was uh, visited European. Und sie tut direkt in die Kamera auf das System. Danke schön. Bei einem Wuttering, how less houses are destroyed in this Irpin. Ist so pretty. Quartier hier. Aha. Uh -huh. You, you will find now in Archive of SRF this speech. Anymore? No, no, no anymore. Just because it's a, it's a, it's a sentence that not um, fits to the Big, big, big story, yeah, narrative. And at the last, nasty side of this war, Russia pumps the natural gas to NATO countries and pay every month to Volodya Zelensky with the dollars. Volodya Zelensky buy drones and send them to the Russian soldiers. That's nasty side of this war. It's not a war, it's a business project. Yeah. I can show you the <coughs> pictures of the killed ones in Bucha. Es gibt eine weitere Fragestellung zu den Leichen, die sehr, sehr ähm, interessant ist. Und zwar, wenn wir uns die, diese Fotos mal genauer anschauen, sehen wir, dass bei den Leichen ständig Care-Pakete gefunden wurden. Also medizinische Ausrüstung und äh, Verpflegungsausrüstung, die offensichtlich von den russischen Einheiten geliefert wurden. Also die Russen haben Hilfspakete geliefert an die Bevölkerung. Und ganz viele von den erschossenen Leuten hatten diese Hilfspakete dabei. So what he is saying is, we see that many of the, the people who have been killed had got care packages from the Russians. And uh, what he doesn't say, but if, if you look uh, at the picture precisely, you will see that all the packages are lying on their Backside. Even the people who are laying uh, upside down have the care packages on, on uh, the backside. So uh, they didn't do that themselves. And it's clear that these people were murdered by, Ru by Ukrainians and not by Russians. Uh, even if the Russians had been there, but we know they uh, had gone, had, they had left. As Lavrov said, and as the mayor of uh, Bucha confirmed. So, even if they had been there, you could say that it's uh, the Ukrainians who killed the people because they got help. Yeah, auch Hilfspaket, Hilfspaket. Hilfspaket, 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 was. And so on. So, uh, there are pictures of the victims, but. Of course, we don't know their names. One more question? Yes, if it's okay. Yeah. Also, I also would like to join Mr. Alexander to thank you very much for standing your strong personal values. It's not always easy to uh, deny an order. And uh, we should actually got the Medal of Honor from someone else. <laughs> I think we have to wait. Uh, do that later and then from a Swiss point of view I always make sure I'm Swiss and German even Ben sounds like German but we have been in a uh, Rammstein once with the freedom bell ringers from Switzerland four guys even Wolf was there too and then I realized this uh, police guys from Germany were a uh, follow us and then when we came to the border where this Rammstein territory starts, these guys just stay behind. And then we're walking uh, further and further, and these uh, US guys, or GIs or whatever, uh, had a close eye on us. So uh, there was a strong feeling, actually a strange feeling, I have to correct myself, a strange feeling, what happens there in German, Germany. 
And uh, you also mentioned uh, a few questions on the LB as well. It's very important questions on a geopolitical point of view with the currencies. I've, as I said before, I have worked in countries that are really hot zones and there were a UN embar embargo on it. And then you've pretty much uh, stopped if you get the required money in to keep the operations running. And that's a big problem, which actually this US guy is totally controlled. Ex, uh, these uh, development countries, would they like to keep them down? As uh, uh, somebody said before, they keep the Russians out of Europe. And in the development countries where there's big potential because of the resources of the, of the human power, manpower, they just keep them down better lower than they're already down there. And that piece doesn't make sense to me. So my question on you, with your experience on a military point of view is, what can we do in Switzerland? I mean, the neutrality pretty much went down the toilet with our political idiots. I stated these words. I'm looking forward to get some some uh, nice letters from them again. And uh, the question is, how what we can do in Switzerland? Okay, <clears throat> I think you should only do things with which you feel well. When you say, I feel good then it's the right thing to do. For me, it's good to tell all people to uh, hold speeches, to uh, take part in conferences like that. For example, last two weeks I was in uh, uh, 12 cities all over Germany, West and East Germany, for the um, EU um, election to promote that. Uh, it didn't work, uh, but um, the people must know. If you tell your neighbors, my neighbors all know what's going on. If you tell your neighbors and they will tell uh, their neighbors, I think it's good if you have the proof. So um, I would recommend for the Germans the, um, the, the proof which can be found in internet. You have to put in two words, Vortrag and Pfaff. Vortrag, like presentation, and Pfaff, P-F-A-F-F, -F, and you will find the presentation of Greifswald. And there I have one hour with all the proof inside. And if you give that to someone who says, that's not true, that's impossible, then he has the facts. You, you have to spread the facts. And you can do it yourself, or you can sh show uh, it in the internet. I think the, the social media is the big advantage we have because when the church was wrong and very, very mighty, uh, Gutenberg came and inven invented the book and after the books went around, the power of the church disappeared. Now we have the social media and they destroy the unsocial media. That's a big advantage. <laughs>